A lot of people hate this level. Although I love the spooky atmosphere that you get just entering this level. Like, the way the music plays and the fact that it starts out all dark and you can start moving immediately. The gimmick with this level is, well not just these things, there's two gimmicks. There's the timing puzzles that a lot of people hate, where you very slowly push against a, a black block. And then there's these things, these ghosts. You have to hang on things to turn on the lights to make them stop bothering you. It's rare that I actually get to the point where the ghosts start attacking me. When, they, when you have ghosts around for long enough, they grow horns and they start attacking you. And I hate this section of the level. This is my least favorite section of the level as a whole. You have to do a very specific thing to make it so that you progress with the level and get to the next checkpoint. Do what I just did there. But I've been stuck here so long that it was two minutes in until I finally got past that point. I kept through the place over and over again because the level vertically wraps. You keep going down and you just, you get returned to the topmost part of the slide. I really hate this puzzle. That is easily my least favorite timing puzzle. I do love these things though. I love how quickly you can jump through them. Although it sucks having to do anything else in them, like slowly wait for you to be slowly sent through them. When I first played this level, I didn't have a problem with any of the time puzzles. I didn't fail a single one. So I guess they're easy, but it is very possible to screw them up. Especially because there's a lot of tricky traps that you have to navigate around. Yeah, I did some editing there. But yeah, it's the perfect example of how, well, for one, the badniks still suck. And two, it's a lot easier to get crushed in this game. I don't think there are enough checkpoints in this level. And two, well, I love those things though. They send, they fling you forwards and they send you by really fast. But still, you, you really don't want to mess up here. And it, it gets tense having the ghosts around too long. I mean, normally I hate dark areas in video games because I can't see where I am and I'm just bumbling around blind. But, well, it actually does get to that point if, if the room gets dark enough. At least to the point where you can't see the switches that you have to push against because it's so dark. But you're not completely bumbling around. You can still see your character in the walls. And the sections like these, it's easy to get crushed in. But yeah, this is one of the this is one of the most infamous levels in Sonic 3 Knuckles. And probably one of the most infamous in all the classic era as a whole. Again, it's got the same problem that the previous level has. It's dull and it's too long. I love the fact that oh yeah, if <laughs> I ran out of time to turn on the lights there. And again, very easy to get crushed here. But yeah, if again, if the level was fun, then no one would mind how long it is. But it's just not. It's, a, it's another puzzle level, but it's it's too slow of a puzzle level. That's the biggest problem I have with it. But I didn't think it was that bad when I first played it. So I had two major problems with the level design of Sonic 3 Knuckles. And the first is that, as you can see, the levels are way too long. And the second is that it's really easy to get lost and not know where exactly you're supposed to go and what you're supposed to do to progress with the level. Because each level is designed with both Sonic and Knuckles in mind. So that Knuckles has his own alternate path that he can take so that he can beat the game with his shitty jump. But the problem is, Sometimes you'll end up going to Knuckles' path as Sonic. 
and then you'll get stuck and not be able to progress because how dare you explore it's like i feel like this game punishes you for exploring more than anything both because you can get stuck and have to backtrack because you reached the wrong pathway or most importantly because the, the level has a time 10 minute time limit so you can't explore because if you explore then you're gonna run out of time especially in some places like carnival night zone and sandopolis the longer the boss takes the the more dangerous it is exploring the level because you're probably going to end up running out of time like there are some bosses where the real boss is the time limit because with Carnival Night Act 2, for example, chances are you're going to be reaching there with like 9 minutes on the clock, and you have it's a wait around boss where you have to wait for Eggman to be low enough for you to hit him, so you can very easily run out of time. We're past the worst part of the level to me, though. We're past the infinite... There's a Knuckles pathway. Yeah, the weird thing is that Knuckles... He just walks into boulders and stuff, and then it just breaks. It's not like he spin dashes into them. No, they just break. But I th again, I think the level design is confusing for a first time player because you're not always going right. So sometimes when you reload from a checkpoint, you can forget where you're supposed to go from that checkpoint. So you'll go the wrong way and then you'll end up backtracking and getting lost. And you can easily get to Sonic's path, or get to Knuckles' path, you're not supposed to, and then have to backtrack. I think it would have been better if they had had levels designed so that rather than there being 14 pathways that any character can go to, and then one of them gets stuck, it should be like, there's a level, and then there's, and then there's a place that only Sonic can jump high enough to reach. Or only Knuckles can get to. It shouldn't be areas where you get stuck and have to backtrack because you shouldn't have gone there with the wrong character. And the levels are so large that it really feels like it's easy to get lost in them. You have to play through them a whole bunch of times in order to get a good instinct what to do. Yeah, this boss is pretty easy. Sometimes it can drag out though. You have to jump into the green gem on his forehead. And that's how you reveal Eggman, and then you just keep jumping into him. The, I think the bosses are the easiest with Sonic, because you can just you can just spam his insta shield. The insta shield breaks the bosses. Oh great, Lava Restone. Lava Restone, easily the most overrated level I've ever heard. Look at this. Does this scream Sonic level to you? No, jumping upstairs, waiting for crumbling floors, jumping so that you don't get hit by fireballs, and later on you'll find chandeliers falling that can crush you. Sound familiar? Yep, it's Marvel Zone all over again. And look, you even hit switches in order to bring up walls. You hit switches to progress, like in Labyrinth Zone. I mean, sure there's parts like that, that are fast, but it's like, I hate- And look! Fire just fell from the sky! Just like marbles, though. Don't you remember that fire fell from the sky and killed me? And then you got these things. I always forget which direction you're supposed to face in order to make them fall down. And you're forced to, to use those things to progress. And it takes so long. And the spin dash makes a loud noise. It feels like the spin dash is louder than the music. Like, how is this fun? And the, the enemies are annoying. Like, I hate the I hate the ones that they have rocks in their heads that you jump on them and nothing happens. And then, then all of a sudden they. Well, it's a good thing that I got knocked into there. At least I found a giant ring. That's good. But yeah, the, the enemies that explode are pretty annoying. I have a feeling that the only reason this level is as popular as it is, is because you can break it with fire shield. 
because you get, you're immune to the lava and the fire when you have the flame shield. But here's the problem. There's so many other things about the level that make it difficult and not at all fun. And the flame shield doesn't fix any of that. Does the flame shield fix all of the spikes that are all over the place? Does the flame shield remove the enemies? Does the flame shield remove all of the slow sections? Does the flame shield add slopes and loops? Does the flame shield get rid of chandeliers that can crush you? Does the flame shield make the level fun to play? No! It's satisfying breaking it, but that doesn't make it any less dull and boring. You're still just... You're still just jumping right, and then they have those slow areas where you just spin dash and you wait. It feels very mario -ish. That's the best way I can summarize my feelings of Lava Reef Zone. It is a Mario level. It's got a few parts in it that sort of feel like a Sonic level, but for the most part, it's very Mario-esque and feels like the Marvel Zone of this game. I mean, it's even a lava level and everything. And its music is not nearly as good as Marvel Zone, I'm sorry. I don't know why so many people love the music of that level. It's elevator music. Like, people complain about the Project Chaos remix of Lava Reef Zone's theme being elevator music. But it sounded pretty much the same to me. It's too laid back, too happy, too underwhelming, and not very... It doesn't have any passion in it. And Lava Levels usually have great music. Like, th this music doesn't suit the Lava theme at all. It doesn't sound ominous or Arabic or anything. Like, I love the music of the Lava Dungeon in A Link Between Worlds. That was great! There's just... Oh, good, another special ring, but I die to the special stage. Anyways, wonderful. So I just love it when that happens. And again, when you lose a special stage, the ring doesn't respawn until you beat the game. And if you reset the game, then the special ring is still gone. The save system saves when you don't want it to. It, 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 I, I prefer when the game tells me when to save it. Sonic games after the adventure series stopped telling you that it's saving. It expects you to just trust that it autosave. And I hate that. It kind of makes me worried that it has an autosave. Or because I don't know the rules, I don't know exactly when it saves and when it doesn't. I mean, obviously it saves after a level, or, but does it save when I get to the boss fight? Can I quit at the boss fight and then just restart from there? And there's another wall that Knuckles can go through. And see what I mean? You go to the wrong place with Sonic and you have to backtrack. Well, actually no. That, 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 that just shows another problem I have. Sometimes the walls that only Knuckles can go through, sometimes you can get through them with Sonic and sometimes you can't. It's very inconsistent and it just makes it all the more confusing. I feel like the, the whole Knuckles ultimate pass thing is very sloppily handled. I mean, sometimes it's done well, but it can be confusing for first time players. Something I haven't mentioned yet is that the original level order of the game was going to have Flying Battery Zone take place right after Carnival Night Zone. And it would have made the... Yeah, that enemy drains your rings, but if you jump if you jump into the poison gas, then it'll destroy the bad nick. And if he, if he attacks you while you have zero rings, you die. So he's pretty annoying. And I don't see how the flame shield completely breaks this level when it's so easy to lose it. There's traps everywhere. But anyways, originally the cannon from the end of Carnival Night Zone was going to take you up to Flying Battery Zone, instead of Sonic just jumping up to it in M Mushroom Hill Zone because it just decided to fly really low to the ground for some reason. So the level transitions would have made more sense that way. But they felt like Flying Battery Zone was too much of a difficulty spike for Sonic 3. And they were fucking right about that. Again, 
I didn't like the level until after I was experienced with it. And I don't think a well-designed level is one that isn't fun until you've mastered it. Look at you, Sonic Rush. And again, the ring physics of this game are not very good because, again, it's so easy for you to lose a ring and never be able to get them back. They fall through the floor, they can fall off screen, they fall through you and you have mercy invisibility, and you know, you think that when you're flashing with this invisibility, you think that it would help you. And this boss is pretty tedious as well. It's so easy to lose your rings and not be able to get them back. It's so easy to get hit by the energy balls when trying to jump on top of the things and kill them. And this thing takes forever to show up again. You face the hands again later on, but there's a completely different strategy for fighting it. It doesn't seem... It's inconsistent. I feel like that's bad game design. Here you just have to wait to jump on its fingers one at a time. And it drags it out to no end. I think Act 2's music is a lot better than Act 1's. Especially, it perfectly suits the atmosphere of a lava level becoming more of an ice level, but it happens to have fire everywhere. I'll see you in the next part.